Okay, so um, Jason, this is my video response to uh, your uh, video on car backloading. I wanted to give some of my input on um, maybe you can either address them or maybe you can call them counter arguments. I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to be uh, an expert on knowing how to read studies. I'm familiar with studies and I know what they explain, but I kind of go for the clip notes and I go for practical application because that's pretty much what I've worked in uh, in the business. Is pretty you know as as far as the fitness industry, as far as fitness industry is concerned, it's really mostly a practical application. Um, uh, one of the things that you wrote down, or one of the things that you said you actually put on your video, it says attempting to manipulate acute hormonal fluctuations. Uh, for the purposes of body composition and meal timing is a complete waste of time. Um, I kind of want to know how this plays in a role with two particular studies. Uh, I mean, I browse them, I'm familiar with them, but I don't know how to read a study completely, but maybe you can read them and then maybe you can uh, articulate a little bit better of what these are explaining as a counter-argument for maybe why car backloading doesn't really work as... Uh, in a direct manner in which you said in your video. Because uh, one of the things that car backloading does do, uh, if I'm not, uh, oh yeah, basically car backloading, the idea is that you're using a non-insulin, I'm going to put this down here, non-insulin mediated translocation of T-glute occur, uh, uh, occurs with uh, resistance training. So the whole idea is that when you weight train, uh, you know, obviously your body, uh, the translocation of T glute or uh, glute 4 tra uh, translocation allows the muscle cells to suck in more sugar, providing for better growth. So they become a little bit more sensitive to absorbing sugar without the help of insulin. Now, if you combine that with um, ingesting a large amount of carbohydrates post workout, uh, I think it's kind of hard to argue the fact that that's that that's not going to have a significant impact on recovery and muscle gain. Because when you really wake up those, translocate, those translocators into those muscle cells, uh, I would think, uh, you know, from weight training, and on top of that, having a large carbohydrate meal, uh, allowing your body to produce more insulin, which helps rise more, to, uh, you know, um, GLUT4 translocation of the muscle cells, uh, that the muscles will become even more spongy and more likely to suck in more sugar. And allow for muscle for muscle growth and um, protein synthesis and all the positive things that come from uh, um, from from lifting and, and ingesting post carb uh, post workout carbohydrates. Um, and you mentioned saying that there are studies that are bad studies or they're uh, not good for the purposes of carb backloading. I'm curious uh, to know what studies that you're referring to because no, I'm. I'm curious and I'm interested in myself. What's up, buddy? Do Owl City. I will in a moment. I'm making a video, okay? Can you go back to mommy, please? Go I, back to mommy, okay? I, I, go I back to mommy and then come back, okay? Okay, then I'll play. My son wants to uh, listen to Owl City of, uh, um, from the Wreck It Ralph uh, uh, movie. Um, so I'll say, where, where was I? Oh, so it's about. Uh, the studies of um, or oh, car backloading is based on bad science or bad studies, uh, um, and I kind of want to know like what you're referencing. Uh, I, this is the thought process I'm going in after watching a lot of your, your videos and seeing a lot of different things. Uh, first, let me first by start by saying that I do really like your content, so I still watch your videos and I love them. But you're kind of along the lines and very biased towards calories in, calories out, and that calories in, calories out is really the main model that you're basing a lot of your science on. And that's a very legitimate science and it's real. And I used to be a big calories in, calories out person myself, but uh, as I have trained more people over the course of years and seen many people change, some people lose weight fast, some people lose weight slow, and it's so easy to just say, okay, it's non-compliance, people not following their diet. Uh, there's got to be something to do with the quality of the food that definitely affects certain parts of the population when it comes to weight loss, weight gain, muscle gain, and of course genetics play a big factor in that. So as much as I, I, I agree with the whole calories in, calories out uh, model with weight loss and muscle gain and whatnot, I think that the one thing that's kind of really important to consider also is that, and I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. Um, 
with the calories in, calories out model is that when you when you take that in consideration that there is so much variance to what you do every single day. Sure, if you do put my my body weight into a calculator, I'm about 187 pounds, uh, 185 pounds, and my you know it's gonna say I burn roughly 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day, somewhere around there, you know. But depending on what stress levels factors I have, um, what weight training program I did, what food I ate where my thyroid levels were at, all these different factors is going to make a big difference on how much calories I burn for the day. And for some people, some some people can eat like 20 to 30 percent above their 20 to 30 percent above their caloric um, their caloric theoretical maintenance and not gain any weight. For a simple fact, their metabolism speeds up. Now, whether it be genetic component, a workout component, a stress, uh, you know. Uh, component, and of course, everything I talk about is for non-drug, non-medicated, non-steroid, uh, you know, non-growth hormone type of uh, uh, scenarios. And what's the other note here? Oh, and also what you said about c controlling caloric intake. I like that because I used to really be a big believer in that as well. I sure can, buddy. But can I finish my video first? What time are you going to be long? Well, right now, see, look at the video here. I'm recording it. Say hi. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Okay, so are you going to let Daddy finish recording his video? Yeah. Okay, because. Okay, come back when I'm done. If I'm still talking, that means I'm still recording, okay? Okay. All right, sorry about that. I don't know. Ender, I'm still talking. I don't know what to do. Just wait. Okay. So about indirectly controlling caloric intake or how the eating, the idea of car backloading affecting... Uh, how it may fit into your lifestyle, um, I completely agree to the point where you're right, certain diets, certain programs do work based on people's lifestyle because of um, because it just might because it might make them eat a certain way for what they're doing and uh, and you're going off the hypothesis that it's coincidence uh, and I don't think it is. Uh, you know there's a lot of things that we don't know. Or a lot of things that are, uh, let me rephrase that. There's a lot of things that are completely misunderstood about exercise and nutrition that I think a lot of us tend to oversimplify things and that there's a lot more going on. And going back to what I was going to say about calories in, calories out, one of the main things to really consider and realize is that when you talk about, okay, if I burn 3,000 calories and I take in 1,500, that means I'm going to have a 1,500 calorie deficit per day. So you do 1,500 calories times 7, that's over 2 pounds a week I'm theoretically going to lose. You know, but the problem is when you talk about calories in, calories out, is that that whole law of thermodynamics in the first, you know, the first law, is that that's based on a closed system. You know, we are in an open system where so many varying factors, like how much sleep you get, again, how your metabolism is running, whether you worked out. I mean, there's so many moving parts that, depending on what you eat, can have a big dramatic effect on how much calories you burn. What time you exercise and what time you sleep will have a big factor in that as well. Uh, again, I apologize if this is a little bit uh, kind of um, all over the place. I, I, I wrote some notes down, you know, and I wanted to write some more. But I'm going to link the studies here in, in, in the video so that you can maybe take a look at them. And, and I'd like to hear your thoughts. Um, and uh, I, I just wanted to make this video because if I didn't make this video, I wouldn't make one at all. And I, I, and I like having our little discussions. It's pretty cool. So anyways, keep up the great work with the content, and I'd like to hear what you have to say.